I want to ask you some a little bit more about the Gardez uh, m material. We have seen other documentaries of interviewing locals, of even of interviewing parents whose kids have been killed. I've never seen anything like your cell phone video that you got from those people. Was that how did this happen? Did you go around knocking on doors saying, "Does anybody have cell phone video of uh, drone of American attacks?" How did that happen? Well, so we were talking with the family, and they. Uh, and they had on their phones because it was a it was a party. It was a a naming celebration for a child, and so they had on their phones the cell phone videos of the dancing uh, and everything. And incredible, incredible thing to see. Yeah, no, and a thing that you don't imagine. You know, singing and dancing in what's supposed to be this incredibly austere fundamentalist kind of environment, and you know them showing us pictures of of, of unveiled women. Uh, you know, um, as well. Are, are you know it's not something that you're, you're led to expect would happen. Uh, and then, so in the morning after the attack, some brave member of their family surreptitiously recorded video of the bodies, not realizing, not, not, not knowing what it meant that the Americans were talking in the background, not knowing what their words were saying. And when they showed us the video, they didn't even, they didn't know the voices were there. Um, so they copied it over on a computer and you know, and we didn't either at the time. I, we copied them all, and then back in Kabul, uh, went through it, and for the first time heard the the voices of these Americans who are obviously piecing together, that fabricating their own. Of course, that this right. completely transforms investigative journalism. That thought that you don't have to be there, that somebody with a cell phone in a place you didn't even think they were yeah. making cell phone videos would have. Yeah, the, the conversation about uh, digging the bullets out of the bodies. In all of these places, people had collected uh, the, the detritus of the attacks, like the, the spent shell casings, uh, like a fragment of a, of a sort of a flashbang grenade, um, you know, a little bit of cell phone video. Um, and, and they kept them, you know, like, like in a box in the living room of, you know, and, and I often wondered why you would keep these a museum of, of this moment of suffering. And it's a universal thing in Iraq, in southern Lebanon, and other places I've been. And it's because I think that, you know, people are waiting for someone to come who cares, that they, so that, for someone to come that they can prove this to. They're waiting for the chance for someone to come and ask them to produce the evidence, um, someone who never comes. 